Ibrook Effendi says, Why do historians not describe our glorious past with all its aspects, but write nothing but lies and criticism in a dry and soulless manner? Thus, they evoke contempt and hatred and create a gap between ancestors and descendants instead of making our glorious past to be loved. We'll leave the answer of this question to the lovers of the glorious Ottomans. Nevertheless, our response to those who make our glorious past to be condemned is as follows. Instead of searching for something wrong among all the right the Ottomans have done for 700 years, mention something right among all the wrong things those you have elected have done for 80 years. Today, I come to you from Chanakale. Whilst in Gallipolo, I went to the Perry Reis Museum. Perry Reis was an Ottoman navigator, geographer and cartographer and was born in Gallipoli. He is primarily known today for his maps and charts collected in his Book of Navigation, a book that contains detailed information on early navigational techniques as well as relatively accurate charts for their time, describing the important ports and city of the Mediterranean Sea. His world map is the oldest known Turkish atlas showing the new world. We stayed in Gelibolu, or Gallipoli as it's commonly called in the West. The place was surrounded with wonderful blue sea and from the main centre we took a bus to take us to Ejiabat. The Gallipoli campaign was a military campaign in the First World War that took place on the Gallipoli Peninsula from 19th February 1915 to 9th January 1916. The Entente powers, Britain, France and the Russian Empire sought to weaken the Ottoman Empire, one of the central powers by taking control of the Ottoman Straits. This would expose the Ottoman capital at Istanbul to bombardment by Allied battleships and cut it off from the Asian part of the empire. Sheikh Lokman Effendi mentions the following key points in his talks that Muslims must remember Chinakale. Had Muslims lost this war and had the West with all their highest technology and with all their soldiers had they won, would have had a clear path to march to Istanbul and not only bring down the Ottoman Sultan and the Caliphate, which occurred a few years later anyway, but the opposition, had they succeeded in 1915, would have had an easy path to finish off Islam for good and take down the Ahle Sunnat al Jama'a Aqidah. Okay, so from Ejiabad, we ended up getting a taxi. And as you can see, we've got this map over here, and this is showing us a wide area. So there's a lot to cover. And as you can see on the map, there's many memorials. This battle took place over eight months and so much happened and we are going to try and see as much as possible. Dad, the one holding the wounded person, uh, that's Memetchik. Memetchik is a respectable way of saying Muhammad, but the Ottomans had a high respect for the name Muhammad, so they would use the word, the name Mehmet. What's really interesting is that this Ottoman soldier is holding a wounded Australian, and it shows that the soldiers at the time didn't just show compassion to their very own, but they would go to the opposition side and deliver them to their own troops. Literally how this battle took place is that during the heat of the battle, now. You can see the opposite side. This is where the opposition was stood with their guns and the Ottoman soldiers were on the opposite end, which is on this end over here. And you can see over here that there's a distance of eight to 10 meters. And the Ottoman soldiers, because they didn't have 
enough weapons, they would come out one by one and they were getting shot one by one. Then another one would come, get shot by the opposition. Then another soldier would come out and he would get shot by the opposition. And this is one of the famous stories over here in Chanakale where you see the heart and with which spirit the Ottoman soldiers fought uh, in order to win this battle, which is remarkable. And it's actually a miracle when you actually consider what took place in this battle. These trucks over here are digging the bullets. The 57th Infantry Regiment was a unit of the 19th Division, and the 19th Infantry Division was a formation of the Ottoman Empire during the Balkan Wars and the First World War. Two thirds of the division was made up of Syrian Arabs who faced the first wave of the Allied invasion during the Gallipoli campaign, and one third were Turks. Together with the 27th Regiment, it was the first to respond following the landing of the Australian and New Zealander Anzac troops on the 25th of April 1915. Whilst defending against the Anzacs, it is believed the 57th Infantry Regiment were wiped out, which makes them immensely famous. I've never been to a place quite like this before, ever. I don't know if a place like this exists as well. There, there must be, but I'm not aware of it. But this entire island is, it's a huge, huge island. It's got miles and miles of land, acres and acres of land. And in many areas, there was war happening. In many areas, because it's surrounded by sea. This entire place is a war zone. Like, look at this. Look at these trenches over here. Look at this. So you can literally be over here, and you can be, you know, hiding your head, getting the guns out, looking around. But I've never been to a place like this, you know, where everywhere you go, you drive for miles. You're seeing places like this where there are trenches, where there's just the very close proximity, there's this side and there's this side. And they're very close proximity to each other and they're literally having to go at one another. But realize one thing, that the English, the French, the Australians, the New Zealand, the New Zealanders, all of these people that were trying to invade these lands, trying to get Turkey, trying to take down the Sultan, they had the latest technology when it comes to weaponry, they had guns, they had far advanced ammunition in, in comparison, they had bombs and they had far bigger numbers as well, they had 500,000 but what did the Ottomans have? 250,000, half the amount that they had and they had swords, some of them didn't even have that, some of them just had rocks, some of them just had, they, they, they created an impression that they have weapons, later on for them to find out they don't have weapons but one thing that they had that the the opponents didn't have was their true heart that in spite of everything being against them the will with which they fought they fought with the fact that i'm going there to to just give to sacrifice my life for the cause and because of that they won this is one of the biggest victories in in human history in wars that has happened so it's remarkable just coming over here i've heard about it but coming here and seeing it for myself how wide the lands are you can't capture it in video you can only give a glimpse of it but it's incredible it's so inspiring and it's so heartwarming to see that there were people out there that perhaps don't exist today but they had a different mentality Whilst in Gelibolu, we had the opportunity to come to this wonderful hospital which depicts the people of the time during the Gallipoli War. That's the sound of um, the recreating the sound hall of um, war that happened back in 1915 over here in, um, in Gallipoli. Can you hear that? It's the, the voice of warning, the sounds of warning that the people are giving to all the soldiers that the enemies are attacking and you can hear the, the animals, you can hear the people as well. The soldiers of Chinakale had no food. 
They were taking their boots made of leather and they were boiling it and eating it to protect Islam. There was a group of Indian Muslims that were fighting for the British and they said, no, we are not going to fight against the Khalifa. The British lined them up on the wall and shot them all dead. There was one girl that was holding a position. The enemies thought that it was a whole battalion, but it was only a few people and one young girl. And finally, when they broke through, they thought it was a whole battalion and they found one young girl there. She was shooting and when they looked at her body, they found that she had over 73 bullet holes in her body. Chanakale is the second most important battle in the history of Islam after the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr was important in order to establish Islam and the Battle of Chanakale is important for the continuation of Islam. Unfortunately, how many Muslims know this? Chanakale was a battle between 500,000 British, French, Canadian, Australian and New Zealander soldiers against 250,000 Ottomans that apart from the soldiers consisted of local women, children, elderly men and elderly women. Overall, there were over 200,000 casualties on each side, with the clear victor being the Ottomans. The Ottoman army, which consisted not only of Turks, but soldiers from the Balkans, Egypt and from many other ethnic cities, fought relentlessly for their sultan, for their religion. Chanakale Gichalmas, when translated, means Chanakale is impossible. May Allah Azawajal elevate their spiritual stations eternally. This entire island, this entire place, it's miles and miles and acres and acres and we've been driving for a while. And there's a lot of land here, so much land here. And uh, then we, we stop at it, each individual place. There's quite a few places to stop at. Um, but whenever you come out, the sun is out, it's in between these beautiful trees, the blue sky, uh, and it's just kept so immaculate. Like, uh, they've done a really good job of actually maintaining this, of cleaning this. Okay, so right behind me is uh, Kilit Bahir Kale or Kilit Bahir Castle, which was built by the legendary Sultan Mehmed Fatih. And this is here in the European side. So this is um, Gallipoli or Gallibolo as the Turkish people call it. This is the European side. Now, what's interesting is that the castle is over here, but opposite this very castle, you'll see a castle that is on the opposite side. And that is the Asian side. Okay, so with this video, we are coming one day into the future. So right behind me is uh, Kilid Bahar. This is the castle I've been showing you and you'll be seeing right now in this video. So I'm at the opposite end. I'm actually in the Asian side today, right now. Uh, this is Chanakale. And that behind me is uh, Garibaldu. Okay, so that's Chanakale over there. So I came to find out recently, very recently, that because I always felt that this only exists in, in Istanbul, but there's two places in Turkey where you find an Asian side, or a European side and an Asian side. And one is in Istanbul, as a lot of people know, but the second place where that exists is over here in Çanakkale. So you have a European side and an Asian side. So an incredible trip so far. And what I want to mention is, this is Mesut Abe an incredible driver, an incredible person, and we've had so much fun. He has shown us everything. Um, so if you do come to Chanakale, or if you do come to Gallibolo and you want to uh, spend your day, because you need a car, you need someone to drive with, he will drive you around, he will show you everything. He's a nice person, especially if you're Turkish speaking. A lot of people ask me to give information uh, with regards to coming to these places, who to go to, Mesut Abe, is the best person to come to. So I'll leave his number in the description box. Once again, çok teşekkür ederim. Mesut abi.